Welcome back to In Your Face. That's talking about medical miracles. Now here today with me, I have here to my left, Valerie Washington. Welcome. Thank you for <laughs> inviting me here today. Oh no, my Just... my ple my pleasure. You know, I'm I'm honored that you are here to tell your story about the event that happened to you in 2008, where Valerie, where she had she had a stroke, where a stroke, a head stroke actually, where she had bro um, broken had broken a blood vessel in her head, and where the medical they have said. The, the medical science, I'm gonna say medical science, where they said that she should not have survived this ordeal. But as you can see, Valerie, you are, what, 70 years old? 70 years old. And this is all. 2015. Mm -hmm. And obviously you're alive, because I'm not sitting next to a dead person. I'm upright. <laughs> <laughs> she said, all right, praise God. Well, this is wonderful. So Valerie, can you um, explain to us what kind of, what happened, the events that happened that, you know, that took place in this, this head stroke and the doctor said that you should not be around here today, but you're actually, you are here. Yeah, uh, the main event that contributed to my stroke is I had high blood pressure. Okay. I'm from a family my mother had it, my father probably had high blood pressure, mm -hmm. but I was not taking any medication for it. I was just, you know, just thinking I'm all right. I was feeling fine because high blood pressure, it doesn't give you any um, really symptoms of you, where you might be feeling bad or upset or you just don't have any symptoms to it. It's so just a silent disease. Oh, I was just about to say that. So you would say high blood pressure is like a silent killer because sometimes it can just take you out and you don't even know that you even have high blood that's, pressure. That's right. Right. So I was support, I should have been on medication and I wasn't mm -hmm. at the time, 2000, 2008, yes. when this catastrophe happened to me. Uh, my son told me that I was in the bathroom it's a good thing he was home, thank God. Yes. And uh, he he noticed that the bathroom door was closed. Usually, you know, I don't close it, but the, when he went to, to open it to see if I was all right, my I was against the door. Oh, and so he the, couldn't he could oh, get so, in. Oh, so your body was against the door, so that's how the door closed. Usually the door is open. Yeah, usually okay. it's open. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he... He noticed right away that something is not right, so he got me out, and I was wobbly. He tried to get me to go to the living room, mm -hmm. and he just knew that I had to go to the hospital. So I think he, he did call an ambulance for me to go to so the hospital. So you were conscious, but you weren't being really... I was not. I didn't know anything that happened. I, I'm just saying what he told me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But I was conscious because I was trying okay. to walk with him okay. as he was trying to, to get me mm -hmm. to the living room. Okay. Yeah. So I was trying. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a, you know, it's something that can happen to any anyone. Yes. And uh, that was the time. I guess it happened to me because I wasn't taking my medication like I should have. Uh -huh. And my blood pressure went too high, and okay. it broke a, a blood vessel in my brain. That's mm -hmm. what happened. It just broke. Wow. The blood vessel just broke. The blood was coating out. I got to the hospital in time uh -huh. for them to, you know, do the necessary procedures yes. to uh, save me, to save from the hemorrhage, to stop the hemorrhage. They were able to stop it. and take care of the situation, thank God. Well, so let, let, me, um, let, let me interrupt you right there because mm -hmm. some things, um, because she did have a, um, let me tell, first of all, let me tell you that Valerie Washington, she is my aunt. So I can tell, I can elaborate on some of the events that took place in 2008 with, with, uh, with the stroke. Um, some things she does not remember, she doesn't recall, she has to rejog her memory because it was such a, a severe stroke that she had. But thank God, it is a miracle that she is alive today. Um, now, what happened from the events where I was there at the hospital from the emergency room? Now, when she went, when she went to the hospital, she arrived at the hospital. Um, basically, the doctor, one of the doctors, um, she was. I'm not going to give any names. Um, it was at we were at St. John's Regional Hospital here in Oxnard. They did a fantastic job. Whatever 
um, what they could do, and then the rest went on to God. Now, what, what the events that took place in the emergency room, like she said, she had a broken blood vessel, blood vessel that broke in her head, and the doctor showed where she was like, basically she was dead. They figured that she, she will not survive. That's what she's saying, she will not survive. The doctor was getting with, with my cousin who was there, Clement Washington, who was there, and he was, you know, he was not giving up on his mother. He said that his mother never gave up on him and he was not giving up on her. So he was fighting for his mother's life and he was talking to the doctor and the doctor was starting to get upset because she was trying to make my cousin um, understand that there's nothing here, it is just a shell. She was actually hitting my aunt's body and trying to prove to him that she's gone. And so therefore, even like she even showed him um, the x-ray where the blood was going through the brain, it was outside the blood vessel, and there was just blood everywhere inside of her head. He said there is no way that she can, you know, she can possibly live with her blood being loose in her brain the way that it was, the hemorrhage to how far it went. So my, my cousin, he just wasn't accepting that, what she was saying. He told her, I understand what you're saying, but I don't want to speak to you anymore. Get me somebody that is above you. So therefore, you know, they felt like she felt like she just couldn't deal with anymore. She was really starting to get upset, this doctor was. So they brought in somebody else. So it was a male doctor, and you know, he explained to him, so the doctors tried to explain to him what was going on with my aunt. Um, Sir, this is really bad. She's not going to make it. He says, I, and my cousin, he started to explain back to everything what the doctor said. He explained to him, I understand what you're saying. I heard what you said to me. I understand what medical science says. I understand what you went to school for. And I know that what a stroke is and, and everything you're saying. He said, I understand. He fully explained everything to him. So they knew that he understand what they said. So what he said, my cousin started to say, my cousin started to pray. And then so, and this, it was, I was right there. I had, I can, I was there. You know, I witnessed this event. I really, truly did. And so my cousin started to pray, and he, he started to, it's like God started to direct him in what to do and what to say to the doctors, to lead them what to do for my auntie that was, um, that was dead on the table. He told the doctor, he grabbed the doctor's hand. He said, I understand totally what you're saying. He said, you did everything you can do. He said, all I'm asking you to do is to let God do what he can do. And then just leave it up to God. We put it in God's hands. He says, look, this is what I want you to do. He said, all I want you to do is drill a hole in her head. That's all I want you to do. Just drill a hole in her head to release the pressure so the blood and everything, all the fluids can drain out. This is what he told the doctor to do. And so he asked the doctor, he said, can I pray for you? So he took the doctor's hand and he started to pray over his hands. And so the doctor says, I'll do that. So the doctors basically, they didn't really, they didn't believe in what he was, what he was saying to do, but they just did it just to calm him down. But what they, what the doctor doesn't realize, he had a hand in the miracle that God started to react mm -hmm. on my auntie's behalf. And so therefore, my, my nephew at the, my, I'm sorry, my cousin at the time, he was in a, I'm going to have to tell the whole story how it is, because, you know, people think that you can just pray and God just answers. What we need to understand is we have to be right with God in order for God to sit to act on our and step in on our behalf. So what my cousin did, which like I said, I am a witness to this. He had a girlfriend at the time, and at the time, you know, he was in fornication, which is mean he was having a sexual relationship with this young woman. So right there in the hospital, he repented to God. He asked God to forgive him. He said he would not. He told the girlfriend, look, if we're going to be together, we have to be together in marriage. We cannot have sex without marriage. And God forgave him. He, God heard his prayer and healed his mother. My, ne my cousin, I keep, I, want, I keep wanting to say nephew for some reason. It's my cousin. He's just as old as I am. He was up on that floor when his mother was in ICU. He would not allow anyone in that room who had any kind of negative thoughts, if they did not believe that God was going to heal his mother, he did not want you there. And he stood guard, like he was a guardian angel outside his mother's room. And he prayed, I mean, he was there, walking up and down the corridors of that hospital and just praying. And there was other people that, that were sick and they was hearing him pray and they were asking him, can he come in there and pray for their family members? And their family members got well. 
It was, it was so miraculous to see what my cousin did and the love that he had for his mother. And I'm sure, well, obviously, that God also heard the boy's cry for his mother and how much faith that he had that God would heal his mom. And God actually did it because my auntie is sitting here today. I, I was there in the yes, room God. when they sit up there and they said that she was dead and there's nothing that they can do. And, and how God just led my cousin and told the doctor what to do, just drill ahead, where exactly where to drill the hole. And God did the rest. He said, God, God will do the rest. That's all I'm asking you to do with your medical equipment. Just drill the hole and let God do the rest. I put the rest in God's hands and let God take care of it. And obviously, God did that. And he did. Praise God. Because I have you no know, after effect, you know, from that stroke, uh -huh. I was able to walk the same way. Yes, yeah, she And was. take care of my business the same way. I had a little memory problem, I guess, from the damage that was done, but it kind of faded away through the years. Look at and that. right now I'm able to get on my computer and play chess and other computer wow. games I love to play. And I love to win. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord has really blessed me in, in a perfect restoration. Wow. I have so much to be thankful for. Look at that. Look like at it that. never even happened. Wow. Because what happened to me, I'm learning from Tanya right now, from my <laughs> niece. Because <laughs> really, I, I don't remember anything. It's a completely, complete blessing. Yes. And what God done for one, he will do for the other. That's right. So we all have hope and faith in him. Yes. Because when Jesus was al around on this earth, as many people as saw him and touched him, they were all healed. So many people were yes. healed. Yes. He wants his people to be healed yes. and upright. Yes. So we know prayer works. There's power in the prayer. And I yes. thank God for all the prayers that went up for me that I'm here and I'm still alive and around. I yes. have so much to be thankful for. Yes. See that? And that comes straight from out of Valerie's mouth because, like she said, and I was a witness to that, and it was, it was miraculous what took place and I couldn't believe it myself. I have never seen somebody pray like that. I, I never seen somebody to have that much faith. I never seen that a person was straight being directed right by God, right there in my face, telling the doctors what to do and, and where to drill the hole. And, and he said, just give it to God and just totally believed, totally believed and have faith in God that God is going to restore his mother back to wholeness. Because anybody who has had a stroke or you had a family member that had a stroke, you know how devastating that it is. And you know how long, of course, of a time if they do come back and if they're ever normal again, because the brain, the, the stroke is in the brain and, and the brain is such a is, is powerful. You know, and, and you know what it is. So when you hear this story and you know that you've been affected by a stroke and you, you know exactly how serious a stroke is and how she has come back, like she, she walks, she has no limp, her left side of her, of her, um, of her body is not affected. She has the use of her, her hands, her arms, her legs. She walks with a fast pace. She's not slow to move. Like she said, she's driving. She can see her eyesight was not affected. Now you know the only way that can happen is by a miracle of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Only way. Science can only go so far. Medical science can only go so far. Book knowledge can only go so far. A doctor can only go so far. They only can go so far. But when something stretches out further than the doctor, what is it? Who are you going to give honor to? Who are you going to believe that did that? Are you going to say, oh, just because it was meant to be? No, it's more than just meant to be. There is somebody higher than a doctor, Amen. higher than you, that takes you beyond reasoning to what he can do. So, you know, God is, we need to learn how to recognize what God does in our lives. And when we turn around and we decide to give, to give him glory and to give him recognition for what he does each and every day in our entire lives. Amen. Each and every day. But we'll be right back after this with more Medical Miracles. Welcome back, and we're here with Valerie Washington. We're talking about medical miracles, the miracle that she has survived a head stroke back in 2008. And Valerie, do you have something else to add to that? All I have to, yes, I have a, something else to add to that, praise God, that I did survive because I survived completely without any, any signs that I was afflicted in any way. 
-hmm. And I'm so grateful to the Lord because I know that a lot of my friends was was praying. My my son, he was a prayer warrior. Yes. Still is a prayer warrior. <laughs> yes. And um, standing up for his mother. And I'm so thankful that I supervised completely and can't even remember what happened, that I'm able to go around and take care of myself. I can go out and work if I have to. Oh, wow. Or do whatever <laughs> I have to do. Even right. though I'm 70 years old, I have so much to be thankful for. I know that prayer is powerful and that what he has done for me, he can do for each and every one of you here today. And that you should put your trust in the Lord, trust in him, because he right. wants each and every one of his children to be well. When Jesus was around, you know, people would take the sick one over to touch him, that they will be healed, that he would touch them and heal them. Yes. And he's still in the same healing business today. God do not want his children to be sick. Mm -hmm. He wished that you would prosper, all prosper and be in good health. And yes. I just want you to, to receive his words and receive his prosperity, receive his good health in Jesus' name. Don't oh, yeah. accept any hit, sickness or anything that come against you. Do not accept it. Just believe that you could be well and you would be well in Jesus' name. All right. Look at, look at that. She's, uh, I think we're having church today. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Every day should yeah. be church. But as you yeah. know, Valerie was saying, like, you know, when she was just saying that um, that he is a healer today, even though we're in 2015, a lot of people lose their faith and believe that, okay, because they see all the bad stuff that's going on happening in the world today. God hasn't changed. God is the same today. I mean, yesterday, today, and forevermore. I recently had a story. Uh, let me tell you a little bit of incident that I had in my, in my family with my youngest son, 20-year-old. Uh, uh, we were talking about what well, Jesus is a healer. Well, you know, when women, uh, when we become pregnant, you know, we are uh, acceptive to certain infe um, affections, affections in, in our body. And um, so what happened was, I remember this event, you know, God had brought it back to my memory, what had happened. Um, I know when I was carrying him, I felt the symptoms of like having a, a urine infection. It felt like a urine tract infection. Well, actually, and then my son, like just three months ago, three months ago, he was feeling like he had a urine tract of infection. So I was telling my son, I was advising my son to drink some cranberry juice and just to see if that would, you know, help the, the help to um, will resolve the problem. Okay, he said he was still feeling it. And so he was feeling a lot of pressure and having a hard time going to the restroom. And so I told him, I said, well, you know what, you probably need to go to the doctor and get some, get some antibiotics. So he, he did that and, find, and finding out that he went to the doctor, found out that he did not have a urinary tract infection. My son got really nervous. They told him, well, you have something that females have. And he was like, huh? So he thought he was turning into a female or something. <laughs> he like, <laughs> I said, son, relax, relax. I said, you need to explain. Because my son, he's, he's away at college. He lives in Texas, and I'm here in California. So I couldn't, you know, get to him. And so he was really upset about it and really nervous about it. I said, go to the doctor. Ask the doctor to explain to you in layman terms so you can understand what she's saying to you. And so he had said a word. And I don't remember the word, all these medical terms. But basically what, what it is, it was an affection that I had had. And see, when I was pregnant with him, I got treated for a urinary tract infection, but that's not what I had but that's what they treated me for. So what happened was affection that was in the body, it stayed in my body and it passed through my son when I gave birth. And all these years, my son is 20 years old. So that infection like dormant in his body is just now manifesting in his body. Now here's the miracle right here. The, the affection that he had that he got through me, it should have killed him within five, uh, like five days after his birth. He should have been handicapped. He should have been blind. But none of these events took place because God was looking over me and he was watching over him. Finding out after 20 years what he had now, he was able, the doctor was able to treat what he has and now he is all clear. Thank Praise God. God. Thank so you. sometimes, you know, you don't even realize what is in your body and what you have transmitted through a fetus that you carried for nine months. So just on that, Knowing that, you should be giving God all the praise 
because God could have took my son's life after the week of being born. He could have been had any kind of medical problems. He could have been handicapped. He could have came out blind, but he didn't. He had something in his body that I didn't even know that he had until now. After 20 years of life, I'm finding out what I passed through my son and was lying dormant in his body for 20 years. Mm -hmm. 20 years. Mm -hmm. That's a miracle. Yes, it is. And that on that miracle, that is, that is enough to give God the praise. It's like, Lord, I don't know what's going on in my body. You don't even know what's in there. But just thanking him every single day mm -hmm. for good health, you don't know what he's clearing out. Amen. You have no idea. Don't Glory take things for God. granted. On that note, we're going to end in your face right here. And we're going to say, don't take things for granted. Mm -hmm. Sometimes recognize just to sit back and just to think. Mm -hmm. Give yourself a quiet time. And really think that what God has brought you out of. Did he bring you out of sickness? Mm -hmm. Did he keep you away from hurt, harm, and danger without you even knowing it? Did you turn somewhere else left when you were supposed to go right, but something in your mind said, you know what, go this way? And what was down that way, it was danger over there? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, just think about it a little bit. Just think. Until next time, this is Tanya in your face. Mm. And... If you have any compelling stories that you would like to share, any testimonies that you would like to share on In Your Face and be a guest here with me, you can reach me at, go to sistertaysister.com. Sister, Tay sister, sister, like you spell sister, Tay, T-E, sister.com. And you can leave me a message or you can go on Facebook, Tanya Washington, and look me up there or you can go to Instagram, The Tanya Washington, and you can also leave me a message there. If you're interested in sharing a compelling story, to reach out to someone, to give hope, until next time. This is Tanya with In Your Face.